One of the things we've learned with all of the new uh, oncology and cardiology alliances is that you really can make a difference in terms of some of these widely used drugs that are very effective in cancer. However, they also can be very damaging to the cardiovascular system. So we're doing a really good job of starting to come together in order to, uh, to work on this. Now what we're talking about here is something really unusual, some spe specific mutations that may be causally related to cardiovascular disease, but they may already be established before cancer is diagnosed. So let's talk to uh, Dr. Remco Molinar, who is an MD, and uh, by the time you look at this, you'll probably have your PhD too, uh, at the Cleveland Clinic and the University of Amsterdam. So first off, thank you very much. For background, let's discuss the clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, or CHIP, and TET2 mutation, so we know what we're talking about here. Yeah, so clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, or CHIP, it's sometimes also called age-related clonal hematopoiesis, or ARCH. Um, I think the books haven't really been closed about what to call it yet, but um, it's, a, it's a situation where mutations are present in the blood or bone marrow of um, individuals that are actually hematological asymptomatic until that point. Um, so if you would um, look under a sequencing machine, you would say, hey, this is a patient with an MDS or an AML, because typical MDS and AML mutations are present in the blood, only the patient don't have symptoms. And um, this, this stage, this, this chip, is associated with an increased risk of uh, the development of hematologic cancers, but also with the development of uh, cardiac disease. And there was a very uh, um, good and provocative paper in the New England Journal of Medicine this year, showing from very large case control studies that um, individuals with a tattoo mutation or another chip mutation have an increased risk of, for example, myocardial infarction uh, compared with individuals who do not have these mutations. So in this case, you put the SEER registries to good use in order to conduct this study. Yes. So what did you do? So SEER is kind of my hobby. and um, <laughs> Nice hobby to have, by the way. Yeah. So um, we thought, well, what, what, what can we do in SEER to augment this data? And well, the, the case control studies are very large, very large number of patients, but it's not population level. So there could be some, some biases there. And on a population level, we um, um, checked in SEER all the MDS patients and the CMML patients and patients with MDS MPNU, which have high frequencies, tattoo mutations. And we checked what is the cause of death of these patients and how long after diagnosis do they die from it. Um, well, roughly about 10% of these patients die from cardiovascular diseases or from uh, cerebral vascular accidents related uh, causes of death. And, um, we cross-referenced that data with uh, data from the Centers of Disease Control for the background um, cardiac death rates to calculate what is the expected number of cardiovascular deaths you can accept, uh, expect in this population and how does it compare to the observed numbers of cardiovascular deaths that we see. And then you can cal calculate a relative risk and we observed increased relative risks of cardiovascular deaths in patients with MDS and CMML and MDS and PNU. So the risks of CHD and CVD relate, related mortality were markedly increased in, in both of these groups, but it was especially in the first year, correct? Yeah, that's right. Which is why you, it suggests that these were there before the diagnosis yeah. occurred. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're thinking. So the, compared with, a, with the background population, with the general population, the risk of um, having cardiovascular disease related mortality um, it's about five or six times higher um, in a patient with CML or MDS or MPNU. And I thought it was interesting, by the way, you used breast and prostate cancers as controls because they're not associated with tattoo mutations uh, or risk factors for cardiovascular yeah. disease. So like I thought that was really good. Yeah, just like myeloneoplasms are only, well, not or only limitedly associated with risk factors for, for CVD. So your findings would seem to argue for screening newly diagnosed patients with CMML or MDS for CVD. That's right, yeah. So um, at the time when a patient is diagnosed with CML or MDS or MDS MPNU, um, just giving a cardiovascular workup, see if anything's wrong, everything can, if, if anything can be managed, um, because maybe our data suggests that those patients could really benefit from aggressive cardiovascular risk factor management. So what are you doing next? Anything al more along these lines? So. Kind of the problem with our research of what with this field in general is that um, there are 
large clinical trials, which may have the granularity of the data to really show us, is it myocardial infarction, is it valvular heart disease, is it right. cardiomyopathy, um, but they don't have the number of patients to show it. And what we have in SEER is we do have the number of patients to show it, but everything is lumped under heart disease. Right. Um, so I'm doing this research in the Cleveland Clinic, but I'm, I, I am from the Netherlands, and well, the nice thing about Europe is that we have smaller cancer registries, but still pretty large, large than clinical data, clinical trials, but they have more granularity. So we're gonna look in um, European cancer registries if we can zoom in on the specific type of um, cardiovascular deaths that those patients uh, um, are at risk for to see what can we really do to, to screen them and to manage their risk factors. Well, thank you, because this is kind of a twist on the whole uh, uh, cardiology needs to be aware of what's happening in oncology and vice versa, and I, I really appreciated your time here to chat about this particular subject. And for ASH Clinical News, please make sure you look in uh, the book as well as online. For coverage from ASH 2017 in Atlanta, I'm Rick McGuire.